Whatever your personal views on Baldur's Gate 3 are, it's without a doubt the most successful CRPG of all time, given the amount of time that's passed between its release and the making of this video. And here I am referring here exclusively to its commercial success. I'm also intentionally excluding the action RPG genre here, which would include games such as Witcher 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Skyrim, among many others. And of course I'm aware that BG3 has also been released on multiple platforms, including consoles, but that doesn't change the name nor the particulars of the genre, so I'll be sticking with the term CRPG. And for many, likely even a considerable number of people, BG3 might have been their first CRPG ever. The distinct possibility that a large number of people who bought BG3 were newcomers to the genre can be deduced from the sheer number of purchases. There have been well over 10 million purchases by now, far exceeding anything else in the CRPG world for the amount of time it's been out. What are the chances that most of those purchases were made by veterans who play all sorts of CRPGs, especially after BG3 became internationally famous and people who have spent years overlooking CRPGs finally began to pay attention to this one. Pretty slim. Now, of course, the category of beginner in terms of the CRPG genre is pretty broad and includes a varied audience, all of whom bought the game for different reasons. There are many who partook of BG3 simply because of its headline-breaking popularity, as the game certainly made the rounds, and people who would have otherwise never touched a CRPG did so because, well, basically because it was popular. Popular enough for them to give it a try, and for many of them, it was well worth it. They enjoyed it, and to their surprise, even enjoyed systems they otherwise would not have in the past, such as turn-based combat. Other people had come to Baldur's Gate 3 from a perspective of the story and characters, rather than gameplay, or even world building. And for them, the most compelling feature is the relationship and the cinematic cutscenes that are currently without parallel in the CRPG genre. And I definitely get it. Baldur's Gate 3 is in many ways a giant soap opera and can be easily enjoyed and interpreted as such, and not everyone enjoys combat. So, in this sense, newcomers to the genre are definitely not uniform. Interestingly enough, all the newcomers to CRPGs who made their first acquaintance with the genre via BG3 have something in common, namely that the conventional CRPG previously held little appeal for them. This idea could just be written off as a lack of exposure, and indeed, I do think that's a factor, but I don't think it's the most important factor. Conventional CRPGs are at times very complex in terms of their rule sets, even when those rule sets are new, and they also tend to be very combat heavy, to a fault. Both Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2 had to have new rules created for them, of course based on D&D originally, as they were new games set in a new world, and they're not very accessible unless you've had previous experience with precisely that genre. And of course infamously, Owlcat's Pathfinder games based on D&D 3.5 edition will scare away virtually any beginner or newcomer to the genre by being games much loved. As an aside, I love them as well, and the list goes on and on. That is, in a nutshell, the accessibility question. But there's also a question of scale. Traditional CRPGs simply lack the scale of Baldur's Gate 3, in large measure because of the lack of resources available to make them that big. But given that, their more limited scale is yet another factor that could easily shoo away more of those audiences that have whetted their appetites on BG3 and are only familiar with that game. And here I think is where many will part ways from the CRPG. There have always been and will always be those people who simply enjoy CRPGs whatever their scale and structure, and they probably enjoyed BG3 as much as the next guy. But such people, and I would include myself in this category, also enjoy much smaller scale games that lack the flashiness and ostentation of Baldur's Gate 3. And the developers who make such games and here I'm thinking of Owlcat, Tactical Adventures, Obsidian of Old, and a few others, there'll be little difficulty transitioning from Baldur's Gate 3 to whatever else is made in the future if it takes on the classic isometric form of the CRPG of old. But for people like that, that was never going to be an issue to begin with, and thus the far more interesting question going forward is how CRPGs might develop in the future in light of BG3 for people that have not always been aware of that type of game. And in the eyes of many people, BG3 set a benchmark, for better or worse, in that genre. And here I have to briefly return to that controversial tweet where a developer called BG3 an anomaly among games. And I'm not just trying to stir up drama here. Now rightly or wrongly, the developer tweeted that received a great deal of flack and he claimed to have been misunderstood in his intentions. One thing he did say that stood out to me, however, 
is related to customer expectations. He stated that games should not be held to the same standard as BG3 because of its unique development circumstances, and this was widely interpreted, again, perhaps rightly or perhaps wrongly, as an attempt to evade accountability in producing bad games. And to be sure, people are not wholly unreasonable, and most people realize that a developer team of 10 people will not be able to produce a BG3, but there probably is a kernel of truth to his fear in the sense that whilst people are reasonable in what they can expect from a development team given its size and limitations, ultimately, they still may not buy a game whose scale is not up to scratch with what they've grown accustomed to, and therein lies the rub. I mention this to suggest that many of BG3's aficionados have likely not become TRPG fans so much as they've become Larian fans. Perhaps a new term such as Larian RPG ought to be coined. People, and I think understandably so, really appreciate Larian. And the phrase you'll read, Larian please take my money comes to mind. And that expresses the trust and willingness of gamers to buy whatever Larian puts out next, provided one hopes it at least matches the quality of BG3. They don't say that, of course, but that's basically what's meant when it comes down to it. Larian, in this sense, has set a benchmark, not just for the industry, but even more so for themselves. And even Sven Vinka has worried out loud about being able to exceed what Larian has achieved with Baldur's Gate 3. That's the problem, of course, when you're on the top. It's really hard to climb further up, and a lot easier to drop down from the soaring heights you'd achieved. And that's going to be a difficult thing to accomplish for Larian, though I think if anyone can do it, it would be Larian. But in some sense, I also think the Larian question is fundamentally less interesting. We know Larian's formula, and we like it. And whatever they release next will probably be at least as good as Baldur's Gate 3. That's almost certain. But the real question is, what does this mean for the rest of the industry? Because winning formulas sell, and it wouldn't be unreasonable to assume that Larian's formula will be copied and imitated. But how reasonable of a proposition is that really? Well, years ago, in the wake of Skyrim's success, there were several successive generations of so-called open-world RPGs, and some companies even altered entire IPs to achieve this. Assassin's Creed comes to mind here. And many people in the industry thought that this was the way to go for quite some time. And you might argue that this is paradigmatic in the sense that developers want to do the same when it comes to CRPGs going forward. And they probably do, on some level. But is this actually achievable? Probably not. In this sense, the infamous tweet made by the developer was correct. Larian is the end product of nearly three decades of trials and tribulations, failures and triumphs, and, above all, learning experience. Most importantly, and I think this is probably the most salient point to be made here, Larian is basically independent, with Tencent owning only 30% of their shares, and Sven Finke and his wife, the rest. And Sven Finke himself is ultimately the key to it all. He's been there since the beginning, has managed Larian, guided it through thick and thin, and just as is the case with Highlander, there can be only one, meaning you cannot replicate Sven Finke. This leads me to believe that in contrast to previous eras where a particular gaming formula led to multiple iterations of it being produced by multiple studios, that is unlikely to be the case for would-be successors to Baldur's Gate 3. And many of the fans who enjoyed it for its refined qualities will probably have to wait until Larian releases their next game whenever that is, because as much as one might argue that Larian has had a massive impact on the CRPG genre, I don't actually think this is the case. I don't think the tried and true methods and formulas of old will be going away anytime soon, because they have appealed and continue to appeal to the core audience of CRPGers, which again is only a fraction of the audience of Larian at this point in time. I believe that going forward we're at a juncture where many fans of BG3 currently united in their love for the game will likely part ways as CRPGs, for better or worse, return to their former roots. All of this suggests that BG3, as well as Larian, are kind of one-offs in the realm of CRPGs, and the others simply cannot and probably should not compete. The CRPG genre has always been niche, and I don't think BG3's existence will fundamentally change that, or even needs to. Whatever Owlcat puts out next, for example, and we all hope it's a Pathfinder game, will find few people from the BG3 crowd. But that's okay. Later this year, the game Avowed is coming out, a continuation of the world of Aeora, the world of Pillars of Eternity, which again, will probably not suck as many people in as BG3. And that's okay. To summarize and condense my thoughts here, I've essentially come to view BG3 as a standalone in the arsenal of CRPGs over the last 30 years or so. Even though it is technically wedded to the original Baldur's Gate series, it is sufficiently distinct that it almost seems unrelated to the original titles. 
And Larian has definitely left its mark on the industry. But I think ultimately, it is a broader mark across the industry than specifically the niche but much beloved CRPG genre. And that's okay. As for me, I'm thinking about doing another run of Pillars of Eternity 2. So thanks for watching. And if you like my content, you can like my videos, share, comment, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. And I'll check you out next time. Take care.